Hey everyone, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is out now, so this video is going to cover everything you can do in the post game. There's quite a lot this time compared to Pokemon Sword and Shield, so we're going to go through everything in a list, no order in particular. However, I will make one exception to that. There's going to be separated between things that you can do in post game before you get the national decks and things, everything after national decks after that. Because honestly, there's a couple of different things there that are limited to post game, but still you have to get the national decks, and I'll show you all how to do that. As well anyway it'll be very easy for you guys let's get to it all right so now that you've beaten the elite four this is the first thing you can do in post game you're able to go to a brand new area maybe you saw it up at the top right of your map but as soon as you finish the credits you're gonna spawn back in your house and you're gonna have a little cutscene with your mom this is still gonna open up the new area for you which is the battle area so once you're outside you can go ahead and fly to snow point city you probably saw this on your first First playthrough and talk to the sailor who is around there wondering what's going on here. If you did not patch the game, he seems to offer you a ride to the battle area before you finish the game. But if you did patch the game, he actually has a different text, which stops you from even knowing about that. So go back down to this sailor right here, talk to him, and he'll ask you to if you wanted to sail to the battle zone. And you do. I mean, right off the bat though, as you've just finished the game, there's not much you can do here. There's a couple of things, but you might as well have a visit here and see what's going on. You will get access to the battle tower immediately. However, as you can see, these NPCs block your access to different routes, which will give you access to the rest of the area later. Straight off the bat, you can go to the battle tower and talk to the scientist on the far right, and he'll give you the ability to judge your Pokemon's IVs. I think that's going to be really helpful for everybody. You can still play around with the battle tower. You can do battles here if you want, but this is what it looks like in practice. If you go to your boxes you'll be able to have a look at your pokemon in here click on one and hit, hit plus until you can see the ivs that say best decent very similar to pokemon sword and shield next up you can go back to the place south of Veilstone City with all the blue roofed place like the hotel and stuff and talk to the guy in the pool. You might have spoken to him before and he would have mentioned saying hey come back after you've beaten the champion or whatever and now that you've beaten the champion you can go back and you can fight him. It's Morimoto, you can fight him and if you beat him he does have a very strong team so make sure you're prepared. He'll give you the oval charm straight off the bat. Guys, next up is the Lake Guardians. You're going to need to do all the Lake Guardians right now before you can get the National Dex. You're gonna have to have everything from the Sinnoh region seen. Now, this is a lot easier than previous and even older games before this, because in the past, at least I remember, you had to catch every Pokemon and actually have every Pokemon to get the whole decks, right, complete. In this case, you don't. You just have to see them. So once you've actually done all of them, the Mesprit is gonna be the different one, or maybe it's gonna be the final Lake Guardian that actually just decides to disappear it doesn't let you catch them the first two will but the third one will vanish and you'll have to try and hunt it down as it moves around Sinnoh like you've seen before with the gen 2 legendary dogs so Rowan's going to interact with you here give you a little cutscene and he's going to talk about the marking map app which you're going to need to be able to see where these Pokemon are but keep in mind every time you change area or change zone the Pokemon of course move you guys probably know about this stuff already so you'll be able to go ahead and pick this up from the president over over in the Poketch Company. Uh, we'll show you where that is now. Here's the Poketch Company in Jubilife City. Just go in, it's the guy at the counter there and he'll give you two, if you haven't already gotten them, he'll give you the memo pad one as well and he'll also give you the, the marked one too, the marking map one right there. And that's what it looks like in practice. So that's my mess sprite right there on the map. All right, so highly recommended to get the National Dex is to actually fight every trainer you see on, as you go. Uh, that will guarantee you getting the National Dex after the end of the game. If you've done that, you only have to fight every trainer. And once you do, go back to the lab here and talk to Rowan and he will finally give you the National Dex. Actually, Oak will. He'll come in and uh, he'll have this cutscene and all that stuff. He'll give you the National Mode for your Pokédex. And voila, you're now free to get a lot of access to a lot of new Pokemon. Uh, Round's actually going to give you Poke Radar as well, which is an old mechanic that's making a comeback. It actually is very, very useful, probably the most useful way to shiny hunt Pokemon. Because even in this game, you're going to be able to see the shiny Pokemon that are guaranteed in the overworld, just like I just showed you there on a picture. So, once you've gotten the National Mode, National Dex, a lot opens up. This is where the real meat of the post-game opens up. You're going to be immediately confronted by a Roark here, who's going to ask you for a rematch, which you can do. 
do, you can go straight in to the rematches, right to his gym. Now, keep in mind, all these trainers are going to be extremely bulky, extremely strong now. They're gonna have very, very high level Pokemon and six per team. All the gym leaders are free to be battled again, as well as the Elite Four, with much more advanced teams and items and everything. But it's actually worthwhile doing them because you're going to, once you beat them, you're going to actually get a couple of things out of this. You're going to get a couple of rare stickers that you did not have access to before. So if you want to design your Pokeball capsules, do better in game shows and stuff because there is online for that. You're going to have to get some extra stickers and after you beat them, they'll give you one of these new stickers here. So we get one stone sticker A from Roark, for example. Next up is going to be one everyone wants. You can get yourself an Eevee right after you get the National Dex 2. Go to Bebe's house in Hearthome City and just talk to her. If you haven't talked to her already, she's going to give you the old dialogue. She's still going to have question marks. You don't know who she is. Uh, but if you did talk to her already, you're just going to go straight into the Eevee dialogue and she'll give you that Eevee straight up. I do have a separate video to evolve Eevee if you guys want to see how that works. Next up is going to be the Catching Charm, the DS Sounds, and the Certificate for completing the Sinnoh. So back to this part where you have all the blue-roofed homes in this sort of resort area. Uh, go ahead and talk to these guys. This is actually the director's house, as it turns out, and there's three people in here. So head on in and talk to all three of them. You're going to get the Catching Charm, which is going to increase your crit catch rate. So you'll be able to catch things a little easier. I think that's going to be useful for what's coming up. You also get a cert there to commemorate you completing the Synodex. And talk to the last guy and he'll give you DS sounds, which will let you hear the music from the old DS games if you're nostalgic for that sort of stuff. All right, next up is Rotom. So if you guys want to catch a Rotom in the game, which I think I highly recommend is one of the strongest Pokemon that you can get for competitive, go back to Eternal of Forest and you'll be able to see the old gym leader standing there looking on the haunted mansion. Make your way in and go all the way through up to the top and you'll be able to find a room with a TV. Now here you can thump the TV, but make sure it's after 8 p.m. on your switch clock, okay? You will have to wait until it's after 8 p.m. or you can change it yourself. So after that, it's all sorts go and thump the TV and it will engage you in an encounter with this Pokemon right here. It's a low level, so keep that in mind. It should be very easy to catch. But once you catch it, you'll get a secret key, which is necessary for evolving the Rotom into whatever form you want. Time to make your way to the Galactic Building in Eterna City. Head on in and just on the ground floor to the far left, you'll be able to use the secret key to open up a secret room. Inside, you'll get your Rotom catalog. Now, keep in mind, whichever ones you're interacting with here, you're going to have to make sure he actually the Rotom actually does learn the move. So make sure you have your Rotom and make sure you do actually teach it the move that the interacting with this object asks you to learn. That's the only way it's going to evolve. Next up is Regigigas. So you probably know this temple in Snowpoint. If you want to come back here, there was a woman who blocked it and says only the Chosen may enter. Well, turns out now you're chosen enough. Candace comes up behind you and lets you in de facto just like that. Even though the NPC is still there with the same dialogue, it actually caught me off guard for a bit. I was wondering why is this not open? Make your way down and you'll be able to get yourself Regigigas right there. Next up is the Cresselia and Darkrai event. So you're going to want to go to Calave City like before, and you're going to talk to the boy in the bed in the lower left house of the island, because he's part of the family for the sailor here who's right outside who brings you to the Iron Islands. But once you talk to him and the mom, you can talk to the sailor, and he'll bring you to a new island where you, it's full moon island, and you'll be able to see Cresselia in here. And uh, this is a really important one. You're not going to be able to catch Cresselia straight away, not right here. But once you go in and you interact with it, you're going to get a little cutscene where the Cresselia will disappear. And now you're going to be able to use that, old, that app we just recently got to be able to see where it's roaming. It does leave behind a lunar feather, which of course is really important. Bring that back to the house with the boy in a coma. And uh, he actually talks about Dark right here. You can just see it in his text. He says he's being watched by Dark or whatever. And uh, the lunar feather will actually wake him up. So once that's done, you'll be able to see your Cresselia on the map roaming the country. But that's not over. That house, that inn there, usually brings you to the Dark Rai event. But Darkrai event in this game is actually not activated yet. You're going to have to wait until they decide to give it to us. Next up is going to be the Victory Road. As we probably remember the first time through, we saw that blue overalls guy blocking a cave and wondering what happened. Well, he's not there anymore. But like I just showed, make sure you get your Defog app from the Safari Zone. 
Make your way in and you'll meet Marley and once you get through that section of the cave, you'll come out on the other end to a nice open patch with a couple of trainers, a couple of items here and there. And at the end of this area is the stone slab and this is for the Shaman event. But again, like the Darkrai event, this event is not put in the game yet. So wait for that. You're gonna need Oak's letter. Okay, let's go back to the battle zone. Now that it's all open with the national decks, we can get a super rod from this guy right here. That's really all you gotta do. Just right to the left of the Poke Center. And now all the routes are also open. So we're gonna go straight from here to do a lot of stuff to get some more quests. Straight away, you can choose which direction you wanna go but you'll be able to make your way to a place called Survival Area. And if you keep going through, you'll be able to make your way up to Stark Mountain. And this is where a brand new quest starts. So now that you've made it to Stark Mountain, you'll be able to do a couple of things. You'll team up with a new NPC in here and you'll have to make your way through after fighting a couple of trainers. Uh, this is him right here. You've probably seen him before. Buck is the man and he'll keep your Pokemon healthy and all that stuff. So make your way through and you get to the last cavern of the mountain. He's gonna go in and take the item from whatever's inside. You don't get to see the item, but he takes it nonetheless. And when you go in, you're gonna have to talk to him once more. He's gonna head off home again, back to the survival area I just showed you a second ago. Now that's where you have to go. You have to go back to the survival area and the house to the left of the Pokemon Center to talk to them both. This is Buck again at home and his grandfather or something. Talk to them both like this and Buck is gonna go back and put the item back. And that is gonna trigger the Heatran event. So you'll be able to get Heatran for yourselves now. Next up, while exploring some of the routes on the battle zone area, you're gonna also be able to come across this house on an island here. Now in here, there's a foreign guy who wants to trade you a Magikarp for a Finian. And you can do that. Now, I think in the past, Diamond, he actually upgraded your decks. Now, he says something like that here, but you already have a dex already fully upgraded. And that's what he also points out. But if you wanted a foreign Pokemon, you'll be able to get one right here. Next up is the resort area. You'll be able to see this on your map in the battle zone as well as the lower right-hand part. If you go in to the resort area, you're going to need 10 ribbons laid across your entire team. Uh, on you right now to be able to be avail of it. But the resort area, you're gonna be able to pamper your Pokemon to make them like you more and buy a couple of expensive ribbons. That's really the, all there is to it, but it was very, very expensive. It's gonna cost you 999,999 of the game's currency. Good luck. The last one is Ramana's Park. Head from Sanjem down to 219. They're connected right beside each other. And once you make your way through, you'll head into Ramana's Park. Now it's no longer blocked. It's officially available and open for business. Oak is gonna see you there and he's gonna give you the Chain Counter app, which is gonna be useful for your Poke Radar and your shiny hunting and all that stuff. So he'll just straight up give that to you when you enter here. But the purpose of Ramana's Park here is actually to get more legendary Pokemon, but it's done a little differently to so what we've seen so far. You're gonna be able to talk to these girls over the left and you're gonna be able to trade uh, shards you find in the underground for slates. But you're gonna have to get a lot of slates. There's only two immediately available uh, if you do have the gems and stuff, but once you go into the park, you're gonna be able to use different slates in different caves that you can see here on display. You're gonna get a little cutscene in each one, which is gonna show you uh, what legendaries are available in these caves. So this is one for the Reggies, clearly. And I'm, I don't have the slate for it right now, but you will be able to get the slates for them, for all of them, and you'll be able to engage with these and catch your legendaries. This is kind of cool, but it's the way to get all the rest of the legendaries in the game. All right, guys, that's it for the post game of this Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful too. There's a lot there. It's a lot. It's a much bigger post game than Pokemon Sword and Shield. How about that? But it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff to keep us busy for a while. And of course, even after all this is done, this is just like the NPC story game, stuff like that for a post game. You still have all the online stuff you can do. You got rankings for the contests and all that. So if you guys are looking to continue playing these games indefinitely or for as long as you can, there's a lot to keep you busy. I also gonna have different videos for things you can do daily and all that other stuff, other guides as well. So make sure you check those out if you wanna get any use of them. Drop a sub and I'll see you guys around in the next video. Till then, bye.